I'm a very active person. I love traveling. I love doing a lot of sports, uh, like hiking, swimming, and, and so on. So that's why I, uh, seven years ago, I did a trip to the west coast of Ireland. Very beautiful, uh, very wild nature, and so on. So we were hiking there. So I went back to work. Uh, and then six months later, I hear a sound. And basically, one second, in one second, my life changed completely from being very active, as you can see on the left, to being completely immobile after a work accident. So I had a very heavy lamp construction that basically fell from the ceiling on my head. And so basically, that left me without uh, balance for a very long time, um, very isolated and losing the most important thing um, in my life, my independence. Uh, so this accident took me on a long rehab journey uh, to get back to the person that I am today. And this rehab journey often left me frustrated and demotivated in the way rehab was being approached. It's very uh, boring in the way current rehabilitation is being done. It's very repetitive, not engaging. Also the access to rehab, it's, it's in the beginning you have a lot, but then suddenly there is this, um, you have much less access to rehab, and then there's this gap where it's very few, and you actually still need a lot. I'm an engineer myself, a biomedical engineer, and so I wanted to uh, find a solution to change that. To going, uh, looking into different conditions, having my own experience, and then looking into different conditions, such as going from traumatic brain injury to stroke to spinal cord injury patients who in a lot of cases have either upper limb, lower limb, or both disabilities. And when I was looking in, into those patients, when we take, for example, stroke patients, the mobility that they have, um, that they gain after their rehabilitation is only 15%. It's only 15% that those people gain back when they leave the hospital. And a lot of that 15%, they will actually lose again because there's, it's too few mo mobility basically to uh, have an active life, and so uh, there is no follow-up rehab as well. So there must be a way to change this 15% and a mechanism to actually give them back more of that mobility. And there is one mechanism that can bring a solution, and that is neuroplasticity. And basically, neuroplasticity is something that we use on a daily basis. We use it to learn new things, to uh, learn a new movement, for example, and to make something inert to ourselves. And let's, let's um, so neuroplasticity, what it is, it's basically, it's this amazing capacity of your brain to change and to adapt to interactions with the environment. So for example, the stroke patient that I was talking about earlier, so when, you, when a person has a stroke, part of your brain becomes damaged, and this damaged part will affect a certain function, whether it's cognitive, whether it's physical. So in a lot of cases, part of the, of the body of a stroke patient has been affected with some paralyzation. And so we can actually, this neuroplasticity that exists, we can rewire, retrain the brain so that actually we can have an undamaged part of your brain take over that function again and reinstate that movement, the connection between your brain and your motion. I often compare it to there is this Wi-Fi connection between your brain and your arm, and because of the stroke, it's been broken, and we want to reinstall that Wi-Fi connection. And so for these stroke patients, for example, what we want to offer them is really the, the ability to gain back more of that motion and more of that mobility. And so that is where VR, virtual reality, really will make a difference because we can allow people, um, such as stroke patients, spinal cord injury patients, with upper limb disabilities, lower limb disabilities, um, we give them the opportunity to engage with objects in the virtual world because of the high level of immersion as well, where in the physical world they would not even be able to pick up a pen because they, one, they lack the strength, and also they have lack of fine motor skills. And that is currently an issue in physiotherapy because of that lack of being able to interact with um, objects. They get really frustrated, they tune out, and they don't achieve the number of repetitions that they should be achieving while going through their rehabilitation. So with VR, we can change that because we can give them a challenge, an exercise. They don't think about the number of repetitions, but they just do it. They achieve the challenge. 
And then another big um, problem currently with, with rehabilitation is that um, on average, the waiting time for these serious conditions is about three months before people move in, move from the hospital, the acute ward, into a rehab facility. And having gone through rehab myself, um, initially you're very motivated because you knew what it was before and you want to get back there. You want to become back the, the active person that you were before and the independent person. But then when you, ha you don't have access to anything during three months, basically you become very demotivated again up to people get very depressed. Even worse, people commit suicide. And that is something that we need to tackle and we need to reduce that. And that is where VR can really make a difference to really uh, bring v rehab a lot quicker to patients. Uh, so this is David Smith. Um, he's a Paralympic athlete. Um, he was a gold medalist in 2012 um, for Great Britain. And he's also spinal cord injury patient. So what he's doing is using our VR rehab platform where he's immersed in a 3D environment. And basically it's based on the grasping method. So he's moving objects around. And in this case, he had three times spinal cord tumor, uh, three surgeries and three times paralyzed from the waist down. And upper limb was affected as a stroke. And as an athlete himself, he was working constantly with visual stimulation and constantly working on recreating these neural pathways that had been damaged because of his injury and working on that neuroplasticity to gain back his mobility. And after about eight weeks, he was already walking again and he still has issues in his upper limb, but it has been tremendous and amazing to work with him to help develop the product as well. Um, so VR, um, what, what, I've seen from the work and the work with, with patients that have been affected by several conditions is that it can have a tremendous impact on people's health and people's recovery. And in terms of the current, compared to the current rehabilitation, in terms of longer engagement and increased motion, uh, the results have been, have been impressive. And I'll take you through two cases that I've worked with. So one of them was a male in his 20s. Uh, he had a traumatic brain injury and a spinal cord injury as well. And his current engagement with physiotherapy is one minute and he's tuning out. So he doesn't want to do it anymore. He's very disengaged. In the VR rehab experience, as you saw before, he was in it for 10 minutes. He wanted to do it over and over again. He was having fun. He was really engaged. The other uh, patient that I worked with is a man in his 60s. Uh, he just had a stroke a few weeks before and his one side was um, completely affected. And in the current rehabilitation, so the physio would ask him to move his arms without any engagement with objects. Uh, there is this conviction installed in patients, and I've seen it in several patients, is that when you have something that is affected, you might have experienced it yourself as well, you want to protect it, and you don't want to over like do the movement, even though you can move your arm, you will always try to protect it. And he was convinced, no, I can't move my arm that far. And then when he was put in the, so there's some fear as well that is installed in the patients. And so when he was put in the VR uh, rehab experience, this fear kind of went away. We gave him a challenge and he, that conviction as well that he couldn't move his arm went away and he was moving his arm in a very safe way, but much further than he was actually doing when he was just doing his rehab. And so that was also really kind of that limiting belief that you cannot move because of it's a very hard condition that you're going through as well and uh, the protection mechanism. So giving back an increased motion range and helping them to get better was a really great um, result. So VR. VR is just, I mean, it's just an amazing technology. It's giving groundbreaking results already in healthcare and it will make uh, a tremendous impact going further, further, whether it's in rehab, whether it's in mental health. So it's really important to embrace these new technologies to let people take charge of their own health and well-being and empower them, because there's nothing worse in not having any options. So thank you.